Good morning and welcome to My Teacher Wears Slippers. But today I'm not wearing slippers because I'm outside in my tortoise habitat. Boys and girls, remember when you met Olive, my tortoise? She is out of hibernation and this is where she lives. We call that habitat. And we actually have this in my backyard. So let's meet tortoise. Olive and see what she's up to. If you see her in the back, Olive, I'm gonna go get her so you can see her. One moment. Hello. You're getting so big. Do you remember meeting Olive in the fall? Before she went to sleep for a very long time, we call that hibernating, she came to see us when we learned the letter T for turtle and tortoise. And then we learned the difference. She is a tortoise because she does not go in the water. You're right. She likes to live on land. So here she has a lot of food to eat. We make sure she has fresh water and she has an area that she lives in when it's cold or hot. She is a reptile. So she can't keep her body too um, hot or too cold. So we have to make sure that she has a place to hide when it gets really hot with the sun or really cold in the winter. And in the winter, she takes a nice deep sleep, which we are learning about this week in our book, Get Up Cub. This is your reader this week and you had it in your envelope if you received it from the gingerbread man. So this week we are learning about Get Up Cub. Cub is a name for a little bear. Now, this little bear is sleeping in the winter, just like Olive the tortoise. They hibernate, but when the weather starts changing, it's amazing. Their body wakes up and they're ready to eat for spring and summer and fall. And then they sleep again about fall, October, until about February. So all those months, October, November, December, January, February, March, and then around April, they wake up. Seven months, they sleep. Isn't that amazing? So this is what the cub is doing too. We're gonna learn about it this week. A lot of things in the spring happen. We see a lot of changes. For example, if you look in my habitat, I have a lot of grass that she eats. She loves all these weeds that grow. And last week's book that you read about, look at this. She's trying to eat my toes. Hold on a second. <laughs> she, uh, we go ahead and see that they are doing something that happens a lot right now. They are growing plants. Now, outside, you may be doing that too, and you may go ahead and this week find some books about flowers that are blooming. You may go ahead and on Starfall find this nice plant book. This is in the reading library, and then we have about bugs. So, all of this is for you this week as you're learning. And then I have another great one that's nonfiction. This is called Bugs, Bugs, Bugs. And it teaches us all about those things that we need this time of the year. So I'm gonna get Olive back. She wants to eat. She's gonna go back into her um, area where she eats. And underneath the tarp, we have a tunnel that she hides in because she gets too much sun, she gets too hot, so she needs to get out of the sun and take a nap, rest a little bit. But remember, this week have fun, enjoy outside, learn, look around, use those binoculars if you made them, and look at all those changes. You'll see them in plants, you'll see them in animals, you'll see them in insects, you'll definitely see it in the weather as it's getting warm. So pay attention, be good scientists, and I'll see you in a little bit. Hello. I wanted to show you another part of my backyard where we plant. Now, a lot of times when you want to grow things, you think you need a large space. But what's great about plants is they really can grow anywhere as long as they have three things. You need soil, which is like a dirt, sun, and water. 
those three things and you can try your own seeds to make a little seedling which grows into a little plant. So let me show you what we have. Right now, I have a seed that's already grown into a little tomato plant. It's past the seedling part because I have leaves and a stem. And if you take a look, no flowers yet. So no fruit or tomatoes will grow yet, but hopefully. And I just put it in a pot. My next one is very exciting because they just started sprouting. I have little seedlings. Can you see the green leaves coming out of the soil? Those are peppers. I like to eat those with eggs and things like that, but it's fun to just grow anything. So right now I'm growing food, not so much flowers, but peppers, tomatoes, and they love the Bakersfield sun. So this is something you can try if you uh, get some seed packets and you'll see the little, what we call seedlings. You'll see the little stem and the next one I have that I keep outside, which we're very excited at. We've never done this, and we will need some space on this because it's what's called a vine. A vine is where it'll grow. Let me show you what's started so far. This is going to be something that you love to eat in the summer. It is a sphere shaped, kind of, and it is red inside with black seeds. Do you know what fruit it is? It's a watermelon. You're right, watermelon. So this is how it starts. We put it in the soil, gave it water, and the seeds started sprouting. And it's past the seedling stage because it has a lot of leaves. So it's really almost starting to want to reach out. Oops. So that right here, this stem is going to branch out, but it's called a vine. A vine means it will need a lot of space to travel. So we're going to keep it close to the ground and try to train the vine out. The flower will make the fruit and hopefully we will get a watermelon. Now, you do need some space on vines. Vines like to travel, like think about little fingers and arms kind of stretching all over. So this guy, my watermelon plant, will need some space, but we're going to try and see what happens. That's what I love about summer and spring is you get to see and become, like I said, scientists and investigators and try it. And a lot of times I learn from my mistakes. So we'll see what happens on my plants. In fact, I'll check in next week and show you some more pictures. All right, I'm gonna go inside now and show you the art for this week. All right, we're ready to do some crafting now. I want to address a couple things. I had a couple friends uh, ask me on Remind, Mrs. Saba, why do you have a can of soda and some wipes on your table? Well, when we were talking about shapes and where we find them around the house, I pulled these out because this is a, yeah, it's the shape of a cylinder. And we see it a lot in soup cans, in soda, we see it in cleaning supplies. So this is a good way to do math with your kindergartner. If you're looking for different solid shapes, look in your kitchen. You will find a lot of different solid shaped objects. So if you're having a hard time with sphere, find a ball. If you're having a hard time with cylinders or, um, oh boy, a very popular one is, it's, but it's a difficult one. A lot of my parents say, Mrs. Seba, I don't know what a rectangular prism is. Think tissue box. Right now we may have those tissue boxes around. That is a rectangular prism. Cube, it's the small tissue box. So that's a little helpful hint if you're looking for solid shapes. Now let's get to this week's lessons. In your packet, which I'm so glad I heard a couple really positive um, comments about our new packets. They said, Mrs. Saba, we sure enjoy those. They're a lot easier to follow. I hope that's less stress for all of you because we're here to try to make it easy for all of us. And I understand that it is spring fever. I tell you, the struggle is real. All of us as teachers feel it in May. 
The kids want to go outside, as I was telling you last week. So give yourself some credit and give yourself a little break. It is hard in spring to teach. So we love that you are giving it a try. Keep going on those packets and let's do some fun stuff. All right. First of all, I want to talk about that, about these May challenges. Gingerbread Man sent the last May, and this is for my friends that are maybe going beyond. The packets are too easy. They need some extra little challenges. This is for you. If you are not able to get to this, it is okay. We understand. The packets are really what we want you doing every day. Reading, writing, and doing math. This is just a little extra. The videos I give you are helpful hints to get to do the reading, writing, and math. And maybe they'll give your children a little extra way of getting the information, but know that also um, this is just extra. When it says to learn a song, I wanted to let you know we are not testing on that. It is just a fun thing for you to do at home if you are able. So this week for learning, we have the books that we gave you in the mail, and I want to talk a little bit about this week. It is, Who Can Help? Did you hear the question mark? Yeah, it's there. Make sure that your child looks at that and understands that means a question voice. Question mark we can end sentences with. We can end sentences with a period, which is just a stop statement, and excitement. Those explanation marks make us raise our voice with excitement. So this week, our book has a lot of problems, and we have to look at the characters and find out how do they solve it. So we're going to look and ask, what's the problem? How did they solve it? So we're going to have a very nice question voice all throughout this book with the question marks. Try to count. How many periods? What's in there? How many question marks do I see? So that's a good little tool. Now on to the fun stuff that we have. All right, I told you this week we have art. Last week you did a lot of crafting for Mother's Day and Father's Day for your family. I hope you had a great a time with your family and if you remember if you're not able to be close to them there's a lot of ways that you can show your love and your caring giving heart is by sending them a letter or just talking on the phone so this week I'm so excited as I talk to you outside we have a lot of changes and this week we get to make a bug so I have my easel up and I also have the learning videos up here which I'll kind of zoom in a little bit so your family can freeze that. But let's get to drawing a bug. I have everything set up, so I thought I'd go ahead and show you. I'm going to get a marker. And I'm going to start with number one. First, the eyes. So I'm going to draw my first circle. And then I'm going to attach another circle. And I'm going to make dots right in the center. Now, I'm putting my bug pretty high up in the paper. Actually, bugs are normally on the ground, but I'll fix that in a second. If it happens, it's all right. Next step, number two, I get to make kind of a half circle. So I go to the eye and to the other eye. And now I need the nose and the mouth. So I'm going to make a kind of like an egg oval and just a curve. For the smile. Now it says I get to make the body and it looks almost like a half of a circle chopped in half because these are flat shapes right? So I'm going to go right to the eye make my curve around stop and straight line across for the body. Now we learned that insects have six legs. That's right they aren't spiders only six legs. So I also know that insects have three body parts. Now this is a fun fiction insect because there's only two, but insects actually have three and we'll get to that on our other art project. Now let me go ahead and go to step four. I look, uh-oh, this insect only has four legs, but you know what? I can fix that. One, two, three, four, 
five, six. Yeah, why not? Then I'm gonna do little circles for the feet. Circles, circles, circle, circle. There we go. Now I've got my six-legged insect. Now, I wanna add what is called those little things on top antennae. Here we go. One, two. Some of you can actually make little circles around. And I'm on my last step, number six, and this is the fun details. We're kind of adding circles, so maybe it's like an insect, like a ladybug. So I'm gonna add my circles. And my insect is ready to go. This is the fun part where you get to do whatever you want. Maybe my insect is in a tree because look how high up he is. Or maybe the ground starts here. And in the ground, he's getting ready to eat. There's my stem, my leaves, because I learned outside I have. That's what you need on a plant. We have a stem, leaves, and then I'm gonna make a circle, color it in, and then I make ovals, ovals, ovals. Do you know what these are called? Yeah, this is the petals in my flower. And this insect's getting ready to eat my flower, maybe. So that's on the ground. Maybe I'll put a sun in the corner because it's summer, insects like summer. And always down below name. And if you wanna do short date, remember short date? It is no longer three because that was March. <laughs> That's the last I got to see you and do calendar. It's not a four because it's not April. It is May and that's January, February, March, April, May. So we start with five, five dash. Now, I don't know what day you're watching this and doing this, so I'm gonna leave that in blank because I don't know what the date is for you. Five dash, dash, 20. 20 is the year and it's short date. Five dash, dash, 20. Do you remember that? And we don't do another dash? That's it. So that's your art project this week. Have fun with it, enjoy. Now some of you may want to just do this one and I colored my three parts. An insect has three parts. It has a head, it has a thorax, and it has an abdomen. These are the three parts of a bug or insect. And this week, I hope on your nonfiction, you get to learn about bugs. Go to Read Aloud on YouTube and have your family search for kindergarten read alouds and about bugs or insects. There's some great stuff there. There's also fun fiction about some fun bugs. Oh, so much good stuff in the spring. So do a good read aloud search on kindergarten read alouds for insects, bugs, flowers, and spring. Now, I want to also point out, this is what I have for you. If you're looking for a nice introduction of all these points that I just mentioned, go to this. Let me explain. Learning videos, peep in the big wide world. I use this a lot during this time of the year to introduce things or to help kind of a review what we've done in nonfiction because it gives it in a fun way. It is fiction because peep talks and um, we know characters and animals cannot talk like birds, but it gives us some good details about spring, flower, and planting. So one is called spring thing. The other video or episode is called flower shower. And one of my favorite is peep plants a seed. So these are great ones for your children in kindergarten. Have fun with it. I'm going to go ahead and also before you leave, talk a little bit about this. Now this is uh, from last week and I wanted to give you another review of this. 
great learning. This is math, addition and subtraction. And also, I want to go back to this. Teen numbers and number bonds. This is from one of the first weeks. You can freeze. And this is good review for addition and subtraction. If your child is having a hard time breaking numbers apart, that's subtracting, where they start with the big number and they have to break it apart and what's left, use number bonds, it helps. Or if they're adding and taking parts and making a whole, these will help. So freeze it and this is what it looks like. Put the whole number there, put apart what's left. Break them apart. Use cereal, I love that idea. Use other food items or maybe Play-Doh. Smash, see what's left. You can do it for adding. If your child is having a hard time with the numbers and just doing it in their head, use food, use Play-Doh. Take parts and parts to see how many in all. And that's where this will help too. You can put the items and put it here. It's just a graphic organizer that helps see math in different ways. Another way to see math is with 10 frames. This is subitizing where we know it fast. We see two here, we know right away it's two. Just like when we work on dice, we know when we roll and we see that dots diagonal, that's two. One dot one. 10 frames help us understand that. If we have five here, that's half, so that's five because it fits 10. So use your 10 frames. The last thing I have for you is your book in Wonders. If you're going and using your QR code, check, and going into McGraw-Hill that I showed you last week. And if you don't remember, just get on last week's video. It shows you how. On McGraw-Hill for that QR code. And if you've accidentally lost your QR code and you want to use it, please just uh, text me on Remind and I can actually get it to you and send it to you on your phone so you have it. This book this week for Unit 10, Week 1 is Who Can Help? And we have a question this week. So make sure and count the question marks in your sentences. Count how many periods. And remember, we can also end in excitement or explanation marks. In this book, we need to ask a question. Who can help? What's the problem? How do they solve it? So you're gonna go through the book and look at the pictures and do a nice picture walk first. And then we know that we need to read the details. If you need more kind of extra, go to Starfall in the back. Go ahead to not A-E-I-O-U, but go to Zach the Rat and go all the way down past the short vowels. Go to the long. You're ready. If you are saying, Mrs. Sabe, I got it, go down on that star fall. Go to Zach the Rat and go all the way down past Gus the Duck. And you'll see long vowels with the magic E. Looks like this. Like cake. Or you'll see vowel teams like this, or ain, and you'll get to also words that have the digraphs with a long vowel. So it's very interesting, and you guys are ready. Have a great week this week, you guys. Enjoy outside, enjoy the spring, and I'll see you.